Hey there, welcome back. In this video, we're gonna continue where we left off last time and show you how to make the grass interact with the player. We'll also fix some issues and make some improvements to make the grass look even more amazing. So, let's dive right in. First, let's fix the issue with the grass shader's reflections. As you can see when we moving the camera slightly, the reflections on the grass look strange. So, let's solve this problem. The solution is simple, we just need to adjust the smoothness value of each pixel. We can achieve this by multiplying the smoothness value by a color channel of the texture. Great, but currently the effect is not very noticeable. So, let's try another channel. Since the grass is green, we'll switch to the green channel. Much better now, let's move on to the next part. Next, we'll implement collision detection between the grass and the player. But first, we need to let the shader know the player's position so it can calculate the vertex displacement values correctly. Open your player control script and go to the update function. We need to use the set global vector method in the shader to turn the player's position into a global value so that our grass shader can use it. To use global values in shader graph, we need to create a variable with the same name as the one in the script. The reference name should also be the same, and make sure to add an underscore to the name. Then we need to uncheck, exposed. This way, we can get the player's position in the shader. When the player approaches the grass, the vertices of the grass model should move in the opposite direction of the player's position. And when the player leaves the interaction range, the vertices of the grass should return to their original position. First, we need to get the distance between the vertices and the player. Then, we use a clamp node to limit the distance. Create a variable named interaction distance to control the maximum value of the limit. Let's connect the result to the color to see the effect. Now when the player gets close, the color of the grass will turn black, which means the displacement value is zero. However, those outside the interaction range are white, which is one. This is the opposite of what we expected, so we need to make some corrections. We can use a remap node to solve this problem. We need to remap the values from zero to the interaction distance to a range of one to zero. Make sure to swap the positions of 0 and 1 in the output values. Let's see how the result looks now. Great, now the colors have been swapped. Let's adjust the value of interaction distance to see if it works properly. Next, we need to determine the direction in which the vertices should be moved. To calculate the direction vector between two points, we simply subtract the starting position from the target point's position, and then divide by the distance between the two points. This will give us a normalized direction vector with a length of 1. First, subtract the player's position from the world position. Then, we can use the normalized node to convert the vector's length to 1. Next, create a variable to control the strength of the vertex movement. Multiply the result by the interaction range. Finally, add the calculation result to the wind displacement. Now the entire grass is moving, we need to adjust it. Multiply the vertex displacement by the texture coordinates V value, so the roots of the grass will not move along. The Y value of vertex displacement is not accurate, that is because the player's position is located at the player's feet. Therefore, we need to move the player position in the shader upward by the radius of the collider so that the grass displacement will look more normal. Next, let's go back to the shader graph. We need to multiply the Y value of the displacement direction by minus 0.5. Press the play button to test it out. Great, we have successfully implemented the collision between the grass and the player. Next, let's go to Blender and subdivide each face of the grass into more faces. 
This will make our grass look smoother. When saving the file, make sure not to overwrite the original file. Then, let's go back to Unity and remember to assign the grass shader first. Open the grass prefab we created and drag the grass model with more faces into it. And set it as LOD0. Now we can switch between two models based on the distance between the grass and the camera. The grass that is far away from the camera will use a model with fewer faces, while the grass that is closer will use a model with more faces. Let's select the fade mode to make the transition smoother. Don't forget to check the option for supporting LOD crossfade in the shader. Finally, we can also disable shadow casting for the grass that is far away to reduce performance overhead. Alright, I think that's the end of this tutorial video. Don't forget to click the like button below or leave a comment about the content of the tutorial. See you in the next video.